How you doing today? It's me. I'm back. We're going to get more through uh, the Acts of the Apostles here so that I can get moving on to other things. This is really important information. Um, Y'all want to review this. Read along with me. There's a lot here. Um, we're halfway through. Let's see if we can get two-thirds of the way through today, and then we'll finish it up tomorrow. There's a lot of things that are going on politically in the United States, and um, tomorrow could be a very pivotal point. Um, today we're going to be starting on Chapter 15. Um, get your KJVs out, and we'll move along here. Um, if you want to grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of coffee. Um, some of you just drink tea, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, just get yourself settled in, and we'll get to reading and studying in the Word here. Um, I hope you all had a good day yesterday. I hope everything is going well for you. Um, getting ready for Christmas, I'm sure. Uh, getting ready for a lot of things, I hope. Getting prepared. Preparing your home. Getting your house in order. Preparing your family so that they're of knowledge of what's going on. There's a lot. There is a lot. We now have 64,000 combat troops, support personnel, and command in the Baltics. They just shipped off another 4,000 from Fort Carson, along with 1,600 tanks. And you got to have support to go along with that. So all the personnel that run the kitchens and just basically run everything they're all going over there too so you have quite a lot of people over in the Baltics right now they keep sticking their finger in Putin's eye this is going to be interesting to see how many how many different directions they try to attack us in because tomorrow is the day that uh, the Electoral College puts their votes in for who's president and that's going to be a big deal we're going to see some pretty incredible things coming up probably a lot of violence so prepare yourselves prepare your homes do whatever you need to do to be able to defend your homes whether it be stringing some barbed wire hanging some cans with some rocks or pennies in them along there so that if anybody messes with it it makes them jingle so that you have an alert system um, <clears throat> doing sentry duty you're gonna have to do sentry duty you're going to have to set it up to where you have family members that are trusted with firearms to be able to stay up at night to keep an eye on things. I suggest three-hour to four-hour shifts. That way nobody's overtired and um, positioned to where you can defend. Set up old tires. Old tires work really good. <clears throat> you can build bunkers out of them. And usually people want to just get rid of old tires. They don't even want to charge for them. So it gives you something to be able to work with. Even in an urban environment, you can put up defensive positions in your yard, in your backyard, along your fence, along your perimeter, to make sure that everything is defendable. Um, fire extinguishers. Uh, you probably want to have fire extinguishers that are charged, tested, ready to go. In case if somebody decides to toss a Molotov cocktail on your house or something, you can at least put the fire out before it burns your house to the ground. Be careful. Be aware. Be ready. Because uh, there's going to be a lot of things coming down the road here. There's, I'm, I'm telling you, the elites have got this set up to where it's just going to be insane. Okay? So be aware of that. All right. Everybody got your Bibles? Good. Let's open to chapter 15, Acts of the Apostles. Let me grab my glasses so I can read. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Coffee. I even brought a glass of water with me today. <clears throat> so when I start drying up, I have something to be able to go, fall back on because sometimes the coffee just dries you up a little bit. All right, then. We're going to do chapter 15 and end on chapter 21 today. <clears throat> We're going to read through chapter 21. Okay, so let's get the ball on the road. Y'all ready? All right, chapter 15. 
And certain men which came down from Judea caught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after this manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute, disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas, a certain other of them, should go up to Jerusalem upon the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversa conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of Pharisees, which believed, saying, that there was needful, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the, that the Gentiles, by my mouth, should hear the word of gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the heart, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our father nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence, and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written, After this I will return, and I will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the, the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the re residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doth all th these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my, sen my sentence is that we trouble them not, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsa. Barsabas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and the elders and brethren sent greetings unto the brethren, which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Sicilia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your souls, saying, Ye must be circumcised, and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you, with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazard, hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent, therefore, Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same thing by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us that lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornications, for which, if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fare ye well. 
So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they gathered the multitude together, they delivered the apostle, which when they had read, they rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. And after they had tarried there a space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to abide there still. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord, and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so great, sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cecilia, Cilicia, confirming the churches. Chapter 16 Then came he to Derb and Listeria, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman which was a Jewess, and believed that but his father was a Greek which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Listeria and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took a circumcised, and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decree for to keep <clears throat> that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith, and increased in number daily. Now when they had gone through Phygeria, and the regions of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mycenae, they aside, aside, they aside, Assayed to go into Bythonia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they passed by Messiah, came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go to, into Macedonia. Assuredly, gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Nepo Nepolis, and from thence to Philippi, Philippi which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony. And we're, we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by, the, by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which res resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatria, Thyatria, was worshipped worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her master much gain by soothsaying. 
The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which shewed unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Cyrus and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do extremely trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosened. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he caught for a light and sprang in and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his straight away. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And when it was day, the magistrate sent the servants, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prisons told this, Paul, saying to Paul, The magistrate have sent to let you go now, therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly uncondemned being Romans, and have cast us into prison, and now they thrust us out privily? Nay, verily, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. And the surgeons told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they had heard that they were Romans. And they came and besought them, and brought them out, and desired them to depart out of the city. And they went out of the prison, and entered into the house of Lydia, and when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. Chapter 17 Now when they had passed through Amph Amphipolis and Am Ampol Ampolina, they came to Thess Thessalon Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went un in unto them, and three Sabbath days reseasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must need have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and others of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women did, were not chief women, not a few. But the Jews which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the basser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason, a certain brethren, unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also." whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they he heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, 
who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than the, those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. <clears throat> Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men not a few. But when the Jews of the Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul and Bar Berea, at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea. But Silas and Timothy abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timothy, for to come to him with all speed they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him, when he saw the city wholly giving to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews, and with the devout persons, and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoldics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other some, other some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of straight gods, but because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Aripogus, Aripogus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine wherefore thou speakest is. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. And for all Aneth Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by, I beheld your devotions and found an altar with the inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, nor is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life, and breath, and breath, and all things. And hath made one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the time before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he may not be, may not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being and as certain as of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are not offspring of God, Forasmuch then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. In the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. But he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness that by that man who he hath ordained. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them. Howbeit certain men clave unto him, and believed, among the which was Dinosyrus, the Areopagate and a woman named Dama, Damarius, and others with them. Chapter 18. Let's do a drink. Ah. All right. Fix 
my mic cord, so don't get in the way. Okay, chapter 18. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately came from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome, and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiments and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean, for henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. And when Gallio was made deputy of Archaea, the Jews made insurrection with one again accord against Paul, and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason with that I should bear with you. But if it is be if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look ye to it, for I will be no judge of such matters. And he drave them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sosothenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Galeo cared for none of those things. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shown his head in Sencrea. For he had a vow, and he came to Ephesus, and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not, but bade them farewell, saying, I must be by all means keep the feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. When he had landed at Caesarea, he got up and saluted the church and went down to Antioch. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatria and Phrygia, and in order strengthened all their disciples. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scripture, came to Ephesus. And the man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the Spirit, he spoke, spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquilia and Priscilla heard, had heard, they took him unto them, and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, whom when he was come helped them much which had believed through grace. For he might convince the Jews and that our public, 
publicly shewed by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Chapter 19. And when it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether they, there be a Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what they were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and spoke, spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of, the, of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjourn you. By Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Sevea, a Jew and a chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in, the, in, the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and the fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and shewed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it fifty thousand pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. And these things were ended. Paul's purpose in the Spirit, when he had passed through Macedonia and Archaea to go to, the, to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus. But he himself stayed in Asia for a season. In the same time there arose no small stir about that way, for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which had silver shrines for Diana, made no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Asphysius, but almost throughout all Asia this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be, said it not, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipped. And when they heard these things, they were full of wrath, and cried out and said, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion, and having caught Garius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered un unto the people, the disciples suffered him not." 
And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried, One thing, and some another, for as assembled as the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitudes, the Jew putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with the hand that he would have made his defiance unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice, about the space of two hours, cried out, Great is Diana of Ephesians. And when the town clerk had appeased these people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worship of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet, and do nothing rashly. For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of the churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open, and there are deputies, them that implead one another. But if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day uproar, for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. Chapter 20. Drink of water. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto them the disciples and embraced them, and departed for to go into Macedonia. And when he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece, and there abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him, as he was about to sail into Syria, he pr proposed to return through Macedonia, <clears throat> and there accompanied him into Asia, so Peter of Borea, and of the Thessalonians, Aristar, Aristarchus, Kurt Cus, Aristarchus, Cus, Aristarchus, okay, and Secundus, and Gaius of Derb, and Timotheus of Asia, Tychus, and Troph Trophimus. These going before tarried for us at Troas, and we sailed away from Philippi in days of unleavened bread, and came unto them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber, where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eurytrichus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep, and fell down from a third loft, and was taken up dead. And Paul went down, and fell on him, and embraced him, saying, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, he had broken bread, and eaten, and taken a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive, and were not a little com comforted. And we went before to ship, and sail unto Assos, there intending to take in Paul, for so had he appointed, minding himself, to go afoot. And when he met with us at Assos, we took him in, and came to Mytilene, Mytilene, Mytilene. We sailed thence, and came the next day over against Chios. And the next day we arrived at Samos, and tarried at Trog Trogolium, Trogilium, and the next day we came to Miletus, for Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus, because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he haste, 
hasted, if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. And from Milet Miletius he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And, then, and when they were come to him and said unto him, Ye know from the first day that I came unto Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations which befell me by lying in wait of the Jews. And how I kept back nothing that I was profitable unto you, but have shewed you, and have taught you publicly, and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also the Greeks, repentance towards God, and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day, that I am pure from the blood of all men, that I have not shun shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the, wit over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath pur purchased with his own blood. I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in amongst you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember, that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I command you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Ye, yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have shewed you all things, how that so laboring ye out to support the weak, and to remember the words of Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, and kneeled down and prayed with them all, and they all wept sore, and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, <clears throat> sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him unto the ship. Chapter 21. Let's have another drink. And it came to pass that after we had gotten from them and had launched, we came with a straight course unto Coos, and the day followed unto Rhodes, and from thence unto Petera. And finding a ship sailing over unto Phoenicia, we went aboard and set forth. Now when we had discovered Cyprus, we left it on the left hand, and sailed into Syria, and landed at Tyre, for there the ship was unlaid her burden. And finding disciples, we tarried there seven days, who said to Paul through the Spirit that he should not go up to Jerusalem. And when we had accomplished those days, we departed and went our way, and they had brought us on our way with wives and children till we were out of the city, and we kneeled down on the shore and prayed. And when we had taken our leave one of another, we took our ship, and they returned home again. And when we had finished our course from Tyre, we came to Ptolem Ptolem Ptolemaeus and saluted the brethren and abode with them one day. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip, that evangel the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man 
had four daughters, virgins, which did prophecy. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews of Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am already not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we cease saying, The will of the Lord be done. And after those days we took up carriages and went up to Jerusalem. There went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea, and brought with them one Minosan of Cyprus, an old disciple, with whom we should lodge. And when we were come, un come to Jerusalem, the brethren, rece brethren received us gladly. And the day following Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord, and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. And they are informed of thee, that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What is it, therefore, the multitudes must need to come together? For they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this that we say to thee, for have four men which have a vow on them. Them take and purify thyself with them, and be at charge with them, that they may shave their heads, and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keep the law. As touching Gentiles which believe, <clears throat> as touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strangled, and from fornication. Then Paul took the men, and the next day purified himself with them, entering into the table, into the temple, to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification, until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up the people, and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place, and further brought Greeks also into the temple, and hath polluted this holy place. For they had seen before with him in the city of Trophimus an Ephesian, whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul, and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. And as they were about to kill him, tidings came unto the chief captain of the band, that all Jerusalem was in an uproar, who's, who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beating of Paul. And the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done. And some cried one thing and some another and among the multitude. And when he could not know the certainty for the tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle. And when he came upon the stairs, it was so it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. For the multitude of the people followed after crying away with him. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, 
May I speak unto thee? Whom said, Canst thou speak Greek? Art not thou Egyptian, which before these days maddest an uproar, and leadest out of the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people, and when there was made great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, we're going to stop there, and we'll pick up on chapter 22 tomorrow, so we can finish the Acts of the Apostles. Study this. Study what's being said in this. How they're talking about strangled uh, meat. What strangled meat is, is halal. That's what the Islam, Muslim, Satanists are trying to push on the Western culture is halal meat, which is not processed and butchered the same way that we butcher our meat, where we bleed it and we get all the blood out of it before we, um, before we, we finish butchering and packaging the meat. They strangle their animals. So it's all bruised and the blood is dead inside of the animals instead of being released. Pretty gross. But the Lord's warning us. He's warning, he's warning us all over in here about how to, uh, how to repent, how to follow God's word, how to rejoice in Jesus Christ. It's all here in Acts. All you got to do is just read along with me. Pretty simple. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, may God be with you. God bless you. And enjoy the day. It's Sunday, so today is the day that we just take it easy. Get all ready for the last week before Christmas. All right? Stay away from them blue light specials at Kmart. It's not what it's about. It's about the birth of Christ. Even though we can't confirm when the birth of Christ actually was, this is the chance that we get to celebrate the birth of Christ. Okay? All right. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.